Welcome back, everybody. That's a good spin today. That's a good spin today. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to the things that we do. It's a quick view, but it's not. It's a redux because this tire has been here. This tire is a... This tire borders on a favorite, but this one jumps the line because we've got the sheet. Uh, these tires have been quick viewed before the scoring new scoring protocol. Next up is the Baja Pro X G8. That tire is right here. It's right here on the rack. It has no insert in it and is not mounted to a wheel. Therefore, <laughs> we are, of course, today doing the RC four-wheel drive Interco Groundhog 2. Why, you ask? Well, because they are all mounted and <laughs> they are on wheels and they have inserts made for them. Uh, Canyon Customs, that is a soft, that is a medium, that is a medium, that is a soft. These are Daphne the Sports day-to-day go-tos. The Groundhog 2 is, of course, X2SS, not X2S3, a.k.a. the compound nobody asked for. I have yet to meet an RC four-wheel drive in X2SS that I don't like. I like the Groundhog. The I like the Groundhog. It's right there with the Baja Claw. It might be better, but these are Daphne's tires. Daphne can make pretty much anything look good. So are the Groundhogs that good? Are they are they as good as I think they is? I don't know. They work they work tremendously on Daphne. One eighteen by forty. I would say forty six. So they're a little narrower than some others. Uh, these are hot storms, no longer available, of course. Uh, perhaps potentially to be found on Alley Express, and uh, they're the you know the the square slot deep. They're good, well, semi deep. They're about half deeps. They're good looking wheels. Uh, we'll go we'll go to the gram so m more of the world understands. Two forty. So for the full set, eight thirty five. That doesn't. Are there brass rings in the fronts? That's a front, and that's a rear. Yeah, 176. She's definitely running brass rings in the front. So the the rear combo is 350, and the front pair is 484. That's where we like to be. That's where we like to be. If we're in mid 800s, if we're not shooting for a full kilo of wheelos, and these have been tested to some reasonable extension. Oh, he's so dirty that every time you set him down, big chunks of mud fall off of him. So this is an instance where we absolutely have to make sure to put the fronts on the fronts and the rears on the rear. They should fit perfectly on this boy. He's the class two tester. And and he makes them look good. Black wheel on, on baseline's gonna look pretty nice. These might sit a little more tucked in than his day to days. I think that is why we bought these wheels specifically for Daphne, because they appear deep. They have a really deep lip, but they're not actually that deep. Like, the, and that's pretty much a normal offset. It is a, an, a typical offset. So, this is a little lighter than his day-to-day -day combo, but his day-to-day -day combo is RTR Compound Canyon Trails. And these, these should, theoretically do a little bit better than that. But we're going to find out, because we've never actually tested these, I don't think. Memory might betray me. And then looking at the list, uh, we get we just get into problems. So we've done the, the pivots, we've done the IROX, we've got both sets of the rovers, that's no problem. we got the fossils. We get into a little problem with the fossil because they're mounted on deeps. Those are on toothless. So the temptation is just testament we have two sets the other set is on the gfo gfo might get to step in and do a test or i can test G no i can just use gfo he's on normal offset wheels okay fossils might be up next we're just sort of semi-predicting the future because for canyon trails that's going to be a tough one for me because this is the day-to-day -day foam in a canyon trail this is what comes in a 2-2 canyon trail they're dual stage pretty firm on the inside very soft on the outside but sitting right next to them on the foam peg, Revolt from Belgium. Uh, these are custom made for Tutu Canyon Trail. 
untested so far, and I have this feeling that they're going to be real good. That is a that is a soft outer. So it's going to be tough for me to wheel out Choo Choo Canyon trails on the foams. That might be a long one. We might do a might, that might be a double redux where we do it on the one insert and then test it on the other to see to see how it bounces out. But you know what? We're talking about the future again. We're talking about the future again. Let's talk about a much closer future, a future that resides just right over there, where we go through the 10 stages of the Canyon Tire Testing Protocol, and uh, we redux these bad dogs, and we see what we think of Groundhog 2s, the whole while knowing that on Daphne, these are like cheating. But are they that rig specific? Let us go out of sides and find out togethers. And so we begin the dance. I think that the Baja Claw is, if not my favorite, my sentimental favorite X2 SS tire. Is the Groundhog as good? That's tough, that's tough. The Baja Claw is so good that running it for, I don't remember how long after testing, I was still under the impression that I had a different favorite scale tire. I didn't even know that the Baja Claw was a real thing. Yeah, the Mickey Thompson Baja Claw TTC. Oh, the ants are back. I'm leaning against an ant covered railing. The Groundhog has a, well, they looked so good on Daphne that it was, it was impossible not to. We got to look at like what I do remember, and they are both tires with a lot of chevron to them. Yeah, there's a there's a six. What do we what what uh what what should we canonize here? My brain and mouth fought to try to spit out substantial and significant at the same time. There's a sub there's a significant. There's a substantial amount of forward drive in this tire. And this is a tire with not just, uh, an, uh, I was gonna say unpronounced amount of sidewall. Well, there's, there's next to no sidewall lug on this tire. So when we get to spots like this, we, we, we have, there, there's a weakness. There's a weakness in the profile right there because what pulls you across is the compound. X2SS is what's doing the work right there. But as such, at least in my recollection, these don't suffer from that shoulder collapse on like Swamper type tires. And in terms of scale look, I know, yes, we just discussed that the Baja Claw is a scale tire. The Groundhog looks a lot more scale than, than a Baja Claw to me. And I love the Baja Claw. Steering response is a little less sharp on these compared to others because the sidewall is so smooth. But if you get any portion of that center lug or the corner lug engaged at all, it's just gonna pull. It, I think these do as well as they do because of the compound. I've yet to meet an X2SS tire that I don't like, and I think that these are like their spiritual twin, the Baja Claw. They are really exploiting the power of X2SS. I mean, forward drive is definitely up there. I wanna get right in the middle of it again, right there. Yeah, just pulls, they just pull. And in the current economy, economy, uh, these ain't doing too bad, $25.99 a pair. Just throw the foams into a volcano. Because memory does serve that these come with the RC four wheel drive bulletproof foams, suitable for, I don't know, maybe you don't need to throw them away if your rig weighs like 17 pounds. But they are full sofa cushion status. Look at that back one bagging up. And that's a, that's a fairly firm insert in there. 
Yeah, we where do we lose points? Ultimately, in position ability. I think the way Daphne does well on this is, it's a PSI thing. She's driving down, she's Usain bolting it, hitting the foot down as hard as possible to maximize the drive. It's a shuttle move, it comes back. And we're, we're, we're not surprised at all that we pull across it with a shuttle move because I am not a huge fan of tires that don't have something more in the way of side lug. The groundhog just behave in such a way that in a lot of instances, you don't notice how smooth that sidewall is. And that sidewall is smooth. You get into anything that is direct forward drive and these, these are, will he say it? Will he say it? Panther Cougar-esque. Like they, these pull hard. These pull like tires from the olden times. Where they get weak is when you have to try to pull using your edges. See, if we get up on a face right here, I can feel it's right, it's right there. And then we get a shuttle. But the position ability back, they are forgiving and they absolutely grab. This is a tire that I don't think is going to be one of those, uh, oh, we only had 0.3. We only had three tenths between highest and lowest score. No, 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 no. This is like a five tenths, six tenths. This is a mercurial tire. It is, it is here, it is there. It's almost everywhere. Forward drive, outstanding. Position ability always going to suffer. It's in the DNA. Uh, I call that the swamper effect. How much swamper effect will impact the groundhog? Well, I don't know, I'll let you know. Let's see if I can one hand this or if I just ruin it. There we go. There we go. This is surprisingly agile for how much side lug it lacks, which is all the side lug. This is not the recommended entry to the side hill, but we're, 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 we're trying to be cinematic here and I'm still trying to drive one-handed and I'm not very good at it. Okay, second hand. When you got 240 gram fronts, they, they, will, they will forgive a lot of mistakes. There we go, there we go. If only Look at, look at that passenger rear just floating. And look at the driver rear right now doing the lion's share of the work, which is why we run a medium. Uh, as we sit here and pause, it is slowly trying to just slide that insert across the top of the rim, the beadlock ring. Ah, oh, so planted. That, that tire is so high. Man, this is why we're in a redux, because this is a, uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll go, so, we'll say it, we'll say it right now. I say many things are not super optimized. This tire wheel insert combo is super optimized. Also, I'm now noting, look how narrow the wheel track is on the rear because when Daphne went to the G2 Wilderness axles, she got wide. So we capraized her and really narrowed her up to, to, to bring her back to an appropriate width. That's why we're running these wheels. So this is a combo that is super optimized to the vehicle that they run on day to day. So again, much like every Redux, we are then trying to evaluate. We're trying to put something in a vacuum that does not exist in a vacuum. Because yeah, we're gonna have a ton of rollaways. I'm, uh, as I say, we're evaluating the failures and more than that, we're evaluating the ability to do that, to just hold it and it feels super certain. We're looking for that grip and 
There's so much grip. There's so much grip. Honestly, I don't think baseline can handle the grip. You can't handle the grip. So we're coming out of a winter that was so wet that ordinarily there would be uh, real hot spots in the brightness and darkness of where we're sitting, but the canopy of the tree above this obstacle is so immense that uh, we are just fully shaded. It's like we're indoors. Now, now you see, again, <laughs> we're talking five tenths or six tenths differential between forward drive and like say side hill performance. So that, that does a thing called establishing an average. I haven't, oh, the, dr the drive, oh my God. It is very nearly cougar-esque in the amount of drive that it exhibits. And I think the groundhog goes back a hot minute in time. That is what we do called staying in it. Oh. Much like, and, and some cougar DNA here. This is a tire that it won't make you get up. If you're sitting on your bucket chair, you get to sit on your bucket chair because you can get out of whatever stupidity. You can catch the turtle if you're not rambling at a camera. Look at the descending. This is, I gotta think. I need to transition between uh, setups. I'm gonna have to think. What other tire forward drives this hard? And honestly, I'm left with thinking about semi-exotics and exotics. Baja Claw up there into that, close to that Panther Cougar territory. We suffer only from stuff that we have no control over. We have no side lug. Swamp, the swamper problem. The swamper has a weak shoulder and it doesn't matter what compound it is, it doesn't matter what name is emblazoned on the side lug, on the side wall, that side lug portion, the transition between the main lug and the side lug, that's just how that tire behaves. There's some things that don't translate from 1-1 to, to, comp to scale. But if we can engage that main lug, if we can get a Chevron working, How long can I stay in it before, before we drive out of frame and fall off the rock? And take into account, when we drop out like that right there, Daphne, day-to-day -day user of the Groundhog 2s, is in the neighborhood of two pounds heavier than baseline. So she gets that PSI down he can't quite hold himself as well, they, but they still behave. I would never know. That's the thing. This is a, I have a reason, ooh, spin it. I have a pretty fresh memory in my mind of driving Daphne on these, and she puts in work. These do, they are as advertised. It, it's starting to feel to me that the older the RC four wheel drive tire is like go on a main and you scroll down and it goes product added to catalog at whatever day. If that day was like 10, 12, 14 years ago, it's probably going to be better than the stuff they make now. The stuff that's coming out now, which is crazy. Like stuff's supposed to get better, right? And then we watch these, we watch Panther Cougars. We watch non XL pro line flat irons. We watch any tire from a decade past. They should not be better, but they are. And now we have the two factor, which is the sun is directly in my field view because we have no tree cover right here. If you can engage any, any block of tread, you're just gonna go. Look at this. Forward drive. Forward drive up there with the very best. Okay, let's let's get it further right and see if we can hook it back. Yeah, why not? 
No! That was cougar stuff. The pullback without the sidewall hook? That's not even a thing. Then forward drive. This is a thing of, why test bump? We, you don't need to bump. But there are moments that you need to. How much, how much energy? Whee! Oh. Man. You have to do it real wrong for it to go wrong. Anything that is employing all the, and then, and then we get to the thing that is not going to employ any of the main lug. Look how long they'll stay. Oh, we, we definitely use the hill for that. You see there's more skate in the self-right maneuver. Let's get it more out of, okay. How far, how, flip! Amazing. Oh yeah. The grass is a little damp. Okay, we gotta, we gotta do, we have to do one with the forward. Oh, <laughs> okay, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They just need more wheel speed. I refuse to switch baseline off of 50% reverse. If you're running 75% reverse or you're on a an outrun or something like that and you have 100% reverse, which I think is psychopathic, uh, if you put a fusion on 100% reverse, you, you should probably get checked. Uh, you will whip back to wheels like so fast if you have a lot of steering angle. You don't have a lot of steering angle. Baseline has a caster flip, so he has a lot of steering angle. He can turn around real fast. If you can't turn around that fast, it's gonna be more of a problem. You're not gonna self-ride as well. Also, if you're, you know, different bodies, add as many variables as you want. Um, your results may vary. I think this is now the second shadiest spot. Boy, I can definitely see the monitor now. I think the Groundhog as a scale tire and this much Chevron in the tread, which is, you know, like tractors and monster trucks. Uh, I think this is a fantastic mixed surface tire. You also have a decent amount of lug spacing. You're probably looking at about 50-50 lug versus open space. And the lugs do not have a, a lot of prominence. They are probably four millimeters tall, maybe five. So I think that clearing would do well on these. And again, if that main lug has any chance to grab, you're just gonna go. Okay, let's see if we, where can we get and pull his belly? So if we can get the bumper clear right there, let's try a bump. Just pivoting, adding yet more and more scratches to the XF skid. A little bit right there. We'll just go, we'll just go. Now, we, need to, we need to build obstacle next. Uh, I'm loving Tumble Dome. For those who know the 404s, the real, the real Canyon Arrows, you'll know that I, I, we're, we might take Tumble Dome because it is a bit of a Tumble Dome. Uh, I, I wanna get the next obstacle following Tumble Dome built because I want to have like some wet wood to test. I know I've gotten a lot of requests for wet wood and uh, wet rock, like that's always wet slimy rock, let's call it, because slick rock dries out in about 45 seconds. So we, we, we want to get even more, we want to get, we want to really start fleshing these tests out. I mean, the tire test protocol is going to stay at the 10 stages, but we can do tire test plus. I don't know. I don't know. I think this this tire is a proper all-rounder. And it's one weakness. It's, you know, we've got that nine out of 10, but better. Uh, it's one weakness can be worked around simply by introducing those variables. So if you were to inquire of me, what did the wet, mild winter, we didn't have a freeze day, uh, what did it bring in equal measure to just an explosion of trees, birds, lizards, all things nature. Uh, one of my favorite things nature, and I do not mean my favorite things nature, uh, and this one I do request in the comments below, where you live, if you have them, 
What do you call earwigs? Pincher bugs? I grew up on earwig. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google earwig. It's a little long bug and it has a thing on its tail that looks like a pincher. Earwigs. Because as kids we were told that they would crawl in your ear. And I believe that they would because here's a fun analogy that we can relate while we wet down Slick Rock. Uh, a couple days ago, uh, I drink a cup of uh, proper British tea every morning. I get up, I, I do my usual ablutions, and then I'll, I'll sit down, I'll fire up the kettle. Uh, it's PG Tips Gold. I've been spoiled by the PG Tips Gold. Milk and sugar. I use natural sugar. Oh, I just I just turned into New Zealand all of a sudden. I went, I went English to New Zealand. So I love a good cup of PG Tips. And it was in one of my, I have about five mugs that I drink out of. And I got my mug and I put the stuff in my mug and I was getting ready to stir in my sugar. And I looked down and there's a, an earwig, a deceased earwig floating in the top of my tea. And uh, a lot of thoughts ran through my head as I looked at that dead earwig floating in my tea. The first was, how long ago did he die? Did I boil him in the kettle? because the nozzle of the kettle's open. Who looks in their kettle before they add water and boil it? Um, was he in the mug? Was he holding onto the tea bag? Did he drop off of a shelf or the ceiling or wherever he was earwigging and fall into my tea and die that way? And then I uh, scooped him out with the spoon, threw him in the sink, uh, added my sugar and drank my tea. I mean, no matter how that worked out, I was gonna drink the earwig tea I don't think earwigs carry any sort of transmissible diseases. I just wanted to basically know how much earwig infusion did I have in there? Like if he boiled in the water, we had a good amount of earwig infusion. If he just fell in into the tea that was already hot, I don't know, I don't know. It was an earwig sort of morning and I'm none the worse for it, though I will say, certainly the tea that I drank this morning this is like a tire test. This is why we do Redux. This is a tea Redux. Did the tea I drank this morning taste different because of the day or because it didn't have an earwig steeped in it? So ordinarily, I do the math in my head because it is simple arithmetic. On the board are 10 little rectangles. Well, there's 20 little rectangles, two rows of 10 rectangles. So I have the nine point whatever written in one column. I just add the pairs and then I add those pairs. Simple, right? I do, I do mental arithmetic and we arrive at a score. I arrived at the score and I said, ah, dang it. And then I added it again and I got the same score and I said, ah, dang it. And I wanted a different score so badly that I got on my phone and used the calculator, but no. Sadly, for in this instance, I was correct the first time. I wanted it desperately to be, and uh, viewers of the live stream will remember the local radio station here, the rock radio station that's been here for since my childhood is 96.7 uh, KCAL FM, rocking the empire. And I wanted 96.7 because it was so close, but it was 96.8. We got a 96.8 for the Groundhog 2s, which puts them up there. They are definitely up there. And honestly, I will sit here right before you now, and it is not an attempt to not make more content, but I feel like the Baja Claws would get the exact same score. Like they would, they are almost interchangeable. They lack a lot of side lug. They have a tremendous amount of forward drive. Just their traction profiles are a little bit different between the two. There's just a full chevron on the Baja Claw and not as much on this one. This is one of my favorite tires, uh, but I don't think it has quite the versatility of some other tires uh, because it is a proper scale tire and a tire like we always come back around to a Tusk or a Megalithic or just something that has, even a Canyon Trail, something that has a little more prominence to the side lug will be a little more well-rounded. And I'm talking about a tire that scored a 96.8. Uh, but that is that 96.8. I need to, I need to clarify that is a 96.8 that I don't think is a hundred percent indicative of the tire. Some tires like more weight, some tires like less. This tire does 96.8 on a five and a half pound rig. I think it does 
better on Daphne. If you had seen Wheel and Wednesday 71, Daphne goes where she wants to go because she puts about a pound and a half more onto this exact wheel tire insert combo and makes it work. So take that into consideration as well. The, the big selling point of the Groundhog 2 is that it can work on lighter weights, that mid five pound range, which is where we're sitting. It can work on heavy weights. Daphne is seven plus pounds. She's getting into Phoenix territory. It is not super insert specific. It responds well. It just lacks that side lug. So there's always gonna be a little point down there. That lack of side lug helps some places and hurts in others. It has a massive amount of forward drive. It's a good looking tire. I don't really have anything overwhelmingly negative to say about the Groundhog 2, uh, other than, no, no, I got nothing. I would say it's interchangeability with the Baja Claw would be a positive. I wouldn't consider that to be a negative. They look good on baseline. They look good on everything. It's a good looking tire that performs well. And what are the, at $25.99, yes, foams, basically treat them as if they don't come with foams. No one can use that foam, no one. Uh, I mean, although I don't know, you could buy a set today and an RC Furl drive will stuff them with some other foam. But the foams that these came with are the foams that you can use a drill press to drill holes in them. They are that firm. Canyon Customs in there, normal set, softs front, mediums rear. Great. Absolutely great. This is, this is setup is basically how we would test a tire and we tested a tire, but there's too much interference, metal interference. There's too much static. So it's a redux. It's a 96.8. It's a great tire. I don't, I, I don't really have any beef with it. So that is that. Another quick view redux in the books. The series grows and grows. We got to get through that list. And then other tires are going to show up and then we'll have regular quick views. And we're still, I and other members of the Canyon Arrows, the 404s, are constantly combing Ally Express for the latest and usually not greatest uh, knockoffs or odd creations. There's a couple Tiger Dogs out there that I haven't tried, and Tiger Dog is the leader of the Junk View leaderboard. Uh, there's a Class 1 comp pin coming out, which, God bless you, Injora. Like, you can't use pin tires in competitions, right? They're all banned. But they went ahead and made a class one mini pin anyway. I love that. I genuinely love that. They're like, screw people with the rules. Class one pins, 100%. As soon as I can get a hold of them, I'm going to test them. And uh, Lord Penaby will be out here joyfully testing them on some Injora silicones. So thank you for watching this one. Please do tune in for the next one. Baseline and I had a great time. Who doesn't love Groundhog 2? Good looking tire. Does well. 96.8. Almost 96.7. I would have been happier with the 10th down because I'd have been like 90. Rocking the Empire, the Groundhog, 96.7. But we're at 96.8, and, you know, we deal with it. So <laughs> I had a good one. I hope you had a good one. Uh, tune in for the next one. In between now and then, please, one and all, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. We'll see you next time here from the canyon. I got that all in one breath.